everyone, this is Professor Benjamin, and the objective of this video is to teach you or walk you through the assignments, um, the scientific method assignment that you will have to do in session one. The reason that we cover the scientific method in environmental science is because it is definitely a prevalent tool that's used throughout the scientific community, and scientific um, and environmental science is a science. Um, so we cover this uh, throughout this entire course. We cover scientific reasoning, we cover scientific inquiry, we cover the steps of the scientific method, we cover um, scientific primary texts. So we do a lot throughout this course um, with, with um, the scientific method and scientific reasoning um, because this is a science course. So the first assignment that you're going to have due this semester is the scientific method assignment. And you will find the scientific method assignment within the within the session one, introduction session, scientific reasoning. Towards the bottom, you always find the assignments. I will click on the assignment and I will open the assignment. And right here, it tells me about the assignment. So if you are using the app or if you're using um, a some other tools, a lot of times you may not be able to see all of this information. So it's absolutely essential that you use a computer um, or some sort of laptop um, or a pretty um, intense iPad system. I use a Surface Pro, um, so everyone uses their own tools. But if you're using this on a phone, you most, you most likely will not be able to succeed or complete these assignments. So as you can see here up at the top, this is a Turnitin assignment. And so what Turnitin is, is a, many of you might have used this before at another institution or through your high school. Um, and this is um, a software that you can use that will give you feedback on grammar, on mechanics, um, on other things. It also will give you feedback on plagiarism. So it'll tell you whether um, you source something properly or you didn't source that at all. And if you did not do that, you of course want to change that. Now with this assignment, there's going to be less plagiarism because most of this information um, is you typing in the answers um, from your knowledge. Um, but for other assignments in the future in the semester, you're going to be writing. So you're going to be in paragraph format, etc. In this assignment, you're just filling in worksheets. Um, but in the future, you'll definitely want to use Turnitin. And in fact, you're required to use Turnitin so that you're given feedback. Typically, the feedback is immediate. It may not happen that way. If it doesn't happen for you immediately, just submit the assignment anyway, and then we can work out the kinks later. This, in order to submit your assignment, these assignments uh, in this class, you're going to use .doc, .docs, or PDF. I cannot open a .pages because that's your Google account. So if you are using Google to create or download these documents and then fill in the answers, you want to, of course, hit File, Download As, and then Save As, a Word document and then you'll upload those documents here. So you will be uploading four documents for me, scientific method, experiments, hypothesis, and independent and verse dependent variable worksheets. You will, you can upload them. Um, you'll hit submit assignment, you'll, up, you'll upload it, hit submit assignment, upload, hit submit assignment, upload, hit submit assignment, um, so that you'll have them, you can have them all there. So you can do them individually and upload them at different times. And then in my database, it'll show that. Um, so that I'll have that, or you just hit it and it'll upload all of them at once. So you can check them all. Um, when you hit upload, you can check them all and then upload them all at one time. So it's your decision how you wanna do that in Canvas. You just have to make sure you meet the deadline. If you don't meet the deadline, you get a zero. I do not accept anything via email um, after the deadline. So remember the deadline's 11.59 on Sundays. So make sure that you submit your assignment well before that date and time so it gives your computer some time um, to submit the assignment. The objective of this assignment is for students to understand the scientific method and the important role it plays in the fields of science. Students will learn the steps of the scientific method, how to develop a hypothesis, the role of variables, and how the scientific method can help reduce uncertainty. So that is the whole point of this, is the fact that there are a lot of uncertainties in science. You know, there's even, you know, what's going on? Um, can we vaccinate? Can we not vaccinate? So there's a lot of questions. And science helps remove a lot of those uncertainties. If we can have definitive answers for things, um, it helps people kind of um, digest the material a little bit more. And by using the scientific method and creating experiments that can be replicated, we can remove a lot of that uncertainty. 
the learning outcomes are here. So these are the learning objectives and the scientific reasoning skills that we are um, covering in this assignment. And then the directions. So use the information within the module to complete the below worksheets. The worksheets will be uploaded in this portal by the assigned due date. And remember, they need to be in .doc, .docs, or PDF format in order to upload those into Canvas. I've put file restrictions on there. The other thing is here, so scientific method. So I'm going to walk you through all these different um, worksheets and they so experiments hypothesis and independent will be in different videos so this first video we are going to be covering the scientific method worksheet so I'm going to open the worksheet so just click on it and open the worksheet I already have it open so I don't want to open a third time um, and here it is here's the scientific method worksheet and I'm going to walk you through kind of what I'm looking for so the first question asks you the steps of the scientific method. And of course, um, in the scientific method, we ask a question. So we say, why isn't my light bulb working? Um, and then um, we state a hypothesis. So if I change the light bulb, my light will work. So that's the if then statement. And then we do like an experiment where we take the light bulb out and we put a new light bulb in and we see whether it works or not. So then the um, fourth step after we've conducted our experiment or we've tested our hypothesis um, is that we collect data. So that's number four is we collect data. So we collect the data as to what happened. We look at what happens. We, t we write down our observations, right? And then we draw our conclusion from that. So we draw our conclusion from the data that we've collected and then we report that data out. So step six is to report that data out to the public where they can make comments um, or your scientific community where they can make comments back. And that is the scientific method. And remember, when we make these experiments, we want to be super detailed on what we did in the experiment so they can be replicated. Remember, sometimes in scientific experiments, they don't go as planned. We do not um, the hypothesis that we gave, the conclusion that we draw is that the hypothesis does not work. Um, and sometimes we create new medications through that, or we create new science through, uh, or new results through um, an error that occurred along the way, or because something did not work. So that is why the scientific method is super important. So what is a hypothesis? Well, a hypothesis is an educated guess. It's a guess that we make. Uh, it's, it's the if-then that we make. A theory is a hypothesis supported by testing. So it's a hypothesis that can be supported through testing um, and is supported through testing. A law is a theory that is then accepted by the scientific community. So um, not too long ago, um, the plate tectonic theory was not accepted by the scientific community, is that a lot of people thought gravitational pull is how the um, land masses have have located are located where they are but through experiment after experiment and um and a hypothesis and conclusions that have been drawn it is now a scientifically accepted um theory law that uh plate tectonics is is the reasoning or is the tool that has allowed the um, land masses to be where they are in the world and and allows them to continue to move an independent variable is the um, is the thing that you are going to um, change within the experiment. So it's the thing that you are going to intend to vary within the experiment. The dependent variable are the things that will change um, that you're going to measure. So that's the thing that you're going to measure is the dependent variable. The constants are the things that stay the same. So you want to make sure there's always some things that have to stay the same. And we'll talk about that when I show you a couple of the scientific experiments. The control group um, is the group that you're going to use as that kind of constant. So the control group is the, the constant group, the group. The experimental group is the group that you're actually going to experiment on. The control group is the group that you kind of use. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about this in terms of medication. Are you the control group or the experimental group? And a lot of times in the control group, people are given a sugar pill because psyche can play a role. So both individuals are look like they're given the same medication, but they're actually not. You, and you don't know if you're given the same medication, if you're actually in the experimental group or the control group. So that is what the experimental group and the control group is. Observations, of course, um, are what we kind of look, um, 
based on our senses. So that's what we kind of, we make judgments based on our senses. That's what we see, feel, touch, hear, smell. Inference is the expl explanation of your observation. So we infer a lot. Um, and science, the scientific method tries to take out that inference, um, is that they really want to take out kind of what we infer through that. We don't want to always infer. We want to actually find the factual proof of what's happening. So let's move down here and, and just, I'm going to walk you through one of these examples of op, um, obser observation versus inference. So a, ball, a boy walks into a restaurant with a Steelers jersey on and the waiter says, you must be a Steelers fan. So what from there is the observation? Well, the observation is that boy has a Steelers jersey on. That's the observation, right? He has a Steelers jersey on. We can see that with our eyes, right? So that's the sense that we're using. We can see that with our eyes. Um, and then what's the inference? Is the fact that he's a Steelers fan, right? Is we're inferring from the fact that he has a Steelers jersey on that he is a Steelers fan. Well, maybe he's not, but we're inferring that. Maybe his grandmom gave him the Steelers jersey and he's just wearing it because, um, you know, it brings a memory of his grandma or something. We, we don't know that, but we're inferring that from the fact that the boy is wearing the Steelers jersey. And that's a big issue in science is we don't want to infer things. We want to make sure that there's sound um, evidence that that thing is occurring. Okay. Um, we see this now a lot with political flags, correct? Or what people are driving or what people are wearing, right? Um, and so, and then we infer something from that. So our observation says one thing and then we infer something from it. So that's what you're going to do. So you can do the second one by yourself. Here is, um, I ask you to read this one sentence and then fill in these things, right? These terms with this information. So let's look at this. What is the independent variable of, um, of eating breakfast increases a student's performance in school? So what is that? Well, the independent variable in this case would be the amount of food eaten before breakfast, right? So the amount of food eaten at breakfast. So that's what we're going to kind of look at. Um, that's what we're going to change. So one group's going to eat more, one's going to eat less. And then the dependent variable is the performance. So we look at whether people perform better if they ate more or if they ate less. The constants are what remains the same. So we're going to have to pick either um, males or females be between a specific range, and everyone's going to have to be the same. They're going to have to be given the same food. Um, we don't want to change that because bodies metabolize things in a different manner, right? So we need to look at those things and they have to stay the same for each person in that age group and whether they're male or female. So we're going to have to have like maybe males between the ages of 12 and 13 and then we have to feed them the same thing. So they're the constants in the experiment because we don't want to have these outside factors that are changing um, what's going on in the experiment. The control group are, would be the students um, who would not, they wouldn't change their eating habits. They would just stay the same with what they normally eat. And then we would have the group that would be, um, we would change their breakfast, right? Increase their breakfast size. Um, so we would have that. Um, and then what our hypothesis would be, would be an if-then statement. If we increase food for breakfast, then we probably will see, or then there will be a better performance in students. I, wanna, I don't want to say probably. So let's say if we increase food, then there will be better performance um, in students in their schoolwork. Okay? So that would be an example of a hypothesis that we would use. All right? So that is the independent, dependent, constants, control group, experimental group, and hypothesis. For these constants, you want to make sure they're constant, right? They're the things that you're not changing in the experiment because you don't want to bring outside factors into the experiment. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. Then you're going to look through graphing. Okay, um, and I will, I'm going to uh, follow up with this uh, in the graphing. I want you to try, try and take a stab at this. Tell me whether you're going to use a bar graph, whether you're going to use a line graph, or a um, pie chart to answer these. Hint, hint, usually with percentages, we use a pie chart. Okay, um, usually with percentages, we use a pie chart. So I want you to try and fill in. You're going to either use um, pie, um, a line or bar and then you're going to answer these questions and I don't want to give you these answers I want you to try and take a stab at these okay and try and see if you get them right all right and you'll you, you should be able to with using some of the information you learned above 
I hope this video helped you at least get through this first worksheet in the scientific method.